meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Start with the pledge by Councilman Brooks. The flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we start tonight, I'd like to say that there was a sign outside that says masks are mandated on town property. I would like everyone to please put on their mask if they have one. If not, there's some outside the hallway there. This is uh, turning into a quite a fiasco at the county level. The, our numbers are up, and we're doing everything we can to keep the numbers down. Our responsibility as board members and elected officials is to do everything we can to help keep our residents safe. And I believe that masking is one of those things that we can do. So I'm going to politely ask everyone to put on the mask if they don't have one on at this time. If not, I'm going to ask you to leave the building. No, you're not going to ask me to leave the building. Because I'll go right down to the sheriff's office and bring them up here and tell them that you're infringing on my rights. Brenda, can you call the roll, please? And Lays turn up the volume, we can't hear you. Councilman Blaisdell. Present. Councilwoman Carter. Present. Councilman Froelich. Present. Councilman Isaacson. Present. Supervisor Zalotnik. Present. I'd like to make a statement if I could. I had a number of calls after our last meeting, and I watched our recording. I believe that it's time to enforce some of the rules we've had in place, and which have often been ignored. First, public comment is just that. It's a chance for the public to make a comment. It is not a time to interview the board. If you want interaction, you have an opportunity to do so in the conventional methods that we use, either by calling the town office or emailing us. The other is a kind of distinct matter that we have here. Four out of five of us sitting on this board are directly involved in the upcoming election. To make matters worse, three of that four are on different sides. That makes this year's election extraordinary and complex. Town board meetings are not a place for campaign issues. We as a board will not be discussing the election, in part because of the rules that forbid it, but we will also honor the standard of all municipalities that I'm aware of and not be entertaining comments about the election from the public. If that does occur, we will cut you off, and if you continue, we will ask you to leave. I would like us to maintain as much civility as possible, and that means in our interactions with the public and each other. Professionalism is never out of style, and it should always govern our interactions. And lastly, to my fellow board members, I would remind each of you that the taxpayer is writing us a check to do work on their behalf. We are either part of the solution or part of the problem. It is time that we stand together in our commitment to them and for each person on this board to step up and fulfill their oath to our residents. With that, I will open it up to public comment. Mr. Russell. Mask out there and speak. Please. The coach has asked me to say my address slowly so they get it down this time. Frank Rossi, Jr., 63 Saratoga Avenue, Apartment B, Balsam Spa, New York. I was not going to speak in the uh, beginning public comment until that crappy statement. i got to put it bluntly. To state, and I think some of this was directed at Ms. Morosi and my messages last week, or two weeks ago, that to discuss the fact that there's an election and that it appears that people are not acting in their capacities correctly as town officials is not electioneering, it's stating a fact. I will not refute or be told not to bring this up because until we see better behavior, better communication, etc. You're damn right the taxpayers are writing your checks. That's right. Enough's enough. And to use that statement as possibly a way to blockade that kind of criticism, you can't be serious. I sure hope we don't have two motions that have zero movement on them tonight the same way we had last time. I have never in 10 years of coming to these types of meetings seen that happen. I've seen it happen once in a meeting three times that I can recall, but two in a row? That means somebody's not communicating around here, and I think I know who it might be. I'm not going to name names, but like I said, this is all incumbent on all of you 
not just any one of you, to ignore the fact there's an election and act like you're our town officials. We have things we've got to get done. And the whole question of no Q&A, et cetera, well, you know what? Sometimes we as residents feel like we need to hold your feet to the flames to get answers to some questions we can't otherwise. And to do it publicly in the square like this, no apologies. No apologies for that. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Lucada. <laughs> Good evening, Tony Lucada. And the mile lane. Um, got a question. Saratoga City Hall burned down. The place was gutted. And you can't fix it. They fixed their building before you could put a roof on it. That's sad. I, I heard a failed inspection again. So you probably should get a project manager in there to know what to go in and get it done and open. Secondly, the butterflies. They couldn't be moved for years. Nobody could touch them. Now all of a sudden they could be moved. Twice a year they're allowed to mow over there which I don't think they've done yet. So nothing's happening over there. The butterflies are not causing a problem. So if you have time when I'm done, answer me, why are the butterflies being moved? Or are you scared to say why they're being moved? But I will tell you why. To widen the runways. That is the reason, and the only reason those butterflies. So if you think you're being blindsided by the county, you all better wake up. I think all of you got a letter, didn't you? You get a letter from Mr. Burton? I strongly suggest you read that. It was well researched, and you should open your eyes. Okay? I'm not going to say what's in that letter. It's fact, and you can check it. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Pagosi. Thank you. I'd like to uh, discuss the rate making process tonight. I believe it's an extremely important issue for this town and it's not even on the agenda, although it's uh, about three weeks away from tonight. So it's something I think we really need to discuss and get going on. Our end goal as a town should be doing what is the absolute best for the residents of this town. Regarding the rate making proceeding, the absolute best is to conduct an open and transparent process with public participation. Determining the truth of this long protracted issue and seeking a resolution to the benefits of all the residents of this town. That's what we need to do. How do you accomplish this goal? You can look to the Public Service Commission as a model. After all, they are the state agency charged with regulating utilities and monopolies, and we certainly pay attention to state agencies as a town. You need to swear in witnesses. That's the best way. The absolute best way to get at the truth is to have a witness sworn in. I think Mr. Craig would agree with that. Have a stenographer here to produce the record of the meeting. They can document all the evidence. The cost of a stenographer could be assigned to the utility, which they in turn could uh, add to their costs for the basis of their rate. That's what the law allows for. The stenographer would provide the most accurate record, which would be a responsible and prudent action by this board, if you think there is a possibility of litigation as a result of your decisions in the rate making proceeding. One minute, sir. The right of the public to participate is paramount to this process. To be able to actively participate without interference will allow the public to alleviate their concerns. Anything less than this will prove the board it's all of you are complicit in the cover-up of the facts of this case. And why would any 
of you be opposed to getting at the truth of this matter. That's what we're here for, to resolve it. The only reason I can think of is you got something to hide if you don't want to see the truth. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Zanelli. Anthony Sinella, Stone Church Road, Middle Grove, New York. Um, Mr. Rossi, unfortunately, or fortunately, took my thunder away. But I want to <laughs> make one other comment. I can't understand why, and I'm not going to whitewash the thing, our supervisor goes on a, a spree of spending money that's not necessary to run this town. I can't understand it. Instead of trying to say, well, maybe I'll save $70,000 by doing this, he doesn't care. He wants to spend taxpayers' money. That's all I have to say. Anyone else? Yes, sir. I have a question and a uh, request. Is this the time to bring that up for my neighborhood? Sure. I'm not a public speaker. <laughs> uh, my name is Bob Kolinsky. I live at 90 Hutchins Road. Uh, my request is that back in March when they cleared that land out for the same Scott development over there, the edge water, edge whatever it is, edge of woods, uh, the wind rubs through there now and it took down a large pine tree that just about missed my cars in my driveway about three feet. And the town came through and cut it alongside the road so that they could see the stop sign coming down Hutchins Road. But uh, when I asked them if they could cut up the rest of the tree, they said it's private property. They couldn't do it. Uh, it's an eyesore for me because it's right out my front picture window. I look at it every day. The tree is just sitting there rotting away. I'm wondering if you guys could do something uh, to ask him to cut that up and get it out of there. Uh, it's been there since like early March. Uh, and the other comment or question I had was there's a retention pond area in that development. And I under the way I understand it is that's supposed to be dry unless, unless there's a heavy rain runoff, which is to catch the drain water. That thing has had at least three feet of water in it all year long. Uh, and there's a family that lives right next door to that that had little kids. God forbid they should get loose and run over into that pond. I'm wondering, I heard it failed inspection. That was a rumor. I was wondering if you folks knew anything about that. Are they going to do anything about that and take care of that and how that situation stands? Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Olenek. Auto Line, Van Hassan Line. We have an ongoing issue that is affecting hundreds of people in the town in a negative way that really needs to be addressed, and that is the helicopter issue. Mm -hmm. Whether they're doing their touchdowns, touch and goes at night, when people are trying to sleep, uh, and specifically <clears> on <throat> two dates, on July 28th, they finished at 10.20 p.m., 10.20, and just recently on August 10th, strangely enough, on the same time, 10.20 p.m., he finished the touch and goes. Now, these are becoming a real nuisance for the people that are trying to, number one, sleep, uh, enjoy the outside in the summertime. The town board needs to address the issue. So I would hope that uh, somebody would take up this issue and find out what is going on and how we can resolve it. Thank you. Mr. Begoli. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, first, before I get to the substance of what I'd like to mention, thank you, Mr. Rossi. I appreciate your comments. And I uh, spoke with uh, Ms. Kerr before the meeting. I know she attended the wake of my neighbor, 
uh, lifelong resident and 64 year business owner in uh, the town of Melton, Charles Sherman. I would have loved to see more of you there out of respect for Mr. Sherman operating a business in this town in excess of 60 years. My brother mentioned to you the rate proceeding that is going to occur in 21 days and uh, it's not on the agenda, it hasn't been on the agenda, but I would offer to you the best template for a rate proceeding is provided to you by the Public Service Commission, the PSC. They regulate monopolies such as the national grid. And the main points that are involved in a Public Service Commission rate hearing are follows. A public hearing that occurs on the record, the public is allowed to intervene and question witnesses. The burden of proof rests with the utility company and they are required to present their case for the rate in question. The utility company must defend their testimony under cross-examination. Rates are not presumed to be reasonable regardless of previously approved rates. In other words, they need to start at zero. The utility company must provide sworn testimony and formal affirmation as to the truth of financial documents. The utility company must produce financial records as to the cost and financial return on their property along with accrued depreciation, and this pertains also to contributed property. The public is entitled to all documents, and the public may question sworn witnesses and the documents produced the information and unsigned letters that have been provided to this board previously by the utility company minute, is not competent testimony. Any reports submitted by the utility company's accountants must be sworn to and subject to cross-examination. I sit here multiple meetings. I know how you want to follow the Davis-Bacon law when it comes to rehabbing town hall. I know how you want to follow DEC when it comes to the Carter Blue. I know you want to follow EPA compliance because tonight you propose to spend $9,200 to get in compliance after I, a taxpayer, had paid you to be out of compliance. This is time to get this done, do it properly, <laughs> abide by the law, and follow the TCL, the Transportation Corporation Law, you, and Public Service Commission, as well as you do the EPA and the DEC. Thank you. Mr. Hello, I would like to make two comments. One, when we're at home trying to watch this on Zoom, it's impossible to hear. Please, when everyone speaks, would you please speak clearly into the microphones? I know it's hard to remember, but it would be so helpful at home. The second thing I'd like to mention tonight is I agree with Mr. Olenek. We both live in the same neighborhood. We are subject to the same disturbance in the evenings, late evenings, with the helicopter runs. I have come, come to the point where I'm keeping track. Uh, as I sit on my couch at night, the whole thing shakes and shimmies. Uh, I think it's unacceptable to be after 9 p.m. unless it's military training. I do understand there's a need for that, and I have every confidence they're doing the right things. But when we're having from July 23rd, 1027 p.m. was the last one, 428, uh, I'm going back, I've got a lot of them, 933, May 16th, 10 p.m., May 20th, 933 p.m., May 26th, 929 p.m., June 16th, 9.43 p.m., June 14th, 10, or July 14th, 10.23 p.m., August 2nd, as I think he mentioned, 10.10, August 3rd, 10.07, August 10th, 10.17. These times are, are very, it's very loud. It shakes our entire house. It feels like they're going to land right on top of our roof. So um, I don't know if they can practice elsewhere or at least they shouldn't be that late in the evening. They should allow people their peace and quiet after 9 p.m. Thank you. Anyone else? I have one on the screen. 
Go ahead, sir. Hey, Kirk, I'm going to say the court calls this time to work. I just want to agree with all of you for sure and I am in the way. Helicopters are definitely becoming a real issue for reasons that I outlined in the email. Just real quick, if somebody could forward me Councilman Blaisdell's email address, the address that was forwarded to me, balanced just like any other email address that I had in here. So I would appreciate it. So we could at least forward that email to him so everybody's on board and has that information. Um, but I also just want to quickly read um, the um, resolution number 28 that was written on in 2014. Uh, it's just, it's an important statement that was written in that resolution. It says, resolve the town board. Apologize, let me bring it up here. Whereas the town board would be confined to the property rights of its citizens to be of greater value and importance than the economic benefits that may be achieved through the expansions of the airport runways. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people, when they hear expansion over the airport, they immediately think runways. Um, but in this case, there's a lot of expansion that's happening over there. And, you know, a lot of people that live in the area, they see it. They see the bigger fence going on uh, in that economy. Um, and just to make more items. There, there's all a reason for it, and, and it's all expansion that has to happen over a long period of time. I'm just really hoping that our town has a back on this. Like I said before, it's, it's over 400 acres smack down in the middle of the town, and, and it should be a great important to this, because otherwise, there's not going to be a town left. It's, it's going to push everybody out of here, and it's going to be here. Um, the military helicopters about 10 years ago had placed on that, and I think they've gotten a little lax on that. Uh, there was time where they weren't allowed to do night flights and things over here, but some of that has changed. The reason why it has changed is because some of the systems that they put in over the airport that now allows it. And again, these are expansions, but not necessarily that tarmac that's expanding out there, but every little piece, any, anything that's happening over there, and I really hope that the town has our back on this. Um, we have a flight school over there where people are jumping into the helicopter after 30 minutes of flight class and out of ground. Never flown helicopter before taking the controls. And I, I'll tell you, we've seen some pretty scary things happen in our neighborhood with these helicopters. And I don't know how that school was ever approved to run over them. Uh, there's, there's just too much, it's a too heavily populated area for them to be running that kind of time and distance over our heads. Um, when they started down downstate, there's a lot of farm towns where their original headquarters was. Nothing but farm land back there where they were doing their routines here. It's heavily populated and we don't want them here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Anyone else? Seeing none, I will close the opening public comment and we'll move on to a motion to accept the minutes from the July 28th meeting. That motion. I'll sign it. Thank you. Any discussion? Brenda, can you hold the board, please? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilman McCarthy. Yes. Councilman Crowlish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Delacca. Yes. Next up is a motion to update the proposal for the EPA compliance to $9,200, which is an incorrect total on our previous uh, motion. Make the motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? I guess who, who, okay, I have some questions. You said, um, who reviewed this? Did the controller, who, who came up with the $6,000 figure? Me. Huh? Me. Six, it was six. Last week. Me. Wasn't it six last week? And I have no idea how. And then, I'm the one that put it on the agenda at 6000 and this is directly concerned with MJ, am I correct? Yes. This is payment directly. Yeah, if you add them up, it comes to 9200 I have no okay. idea where I can help I also made it very clear to this town board and to our representative from MJ that I felt it was conflict of interest that 
you were dealing directly with them. Um, and I, I really think that's some, an issue that's got to be straightened out. This is something that's mandatory for us, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. But yeah, Brenda's going to have a microphone. Microphone. Yeah. microphone. Yeah. 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 Mr. Howe works, works with MJ, and I, I specifically, I, I sent an email to the board several months ago and to Joel, our engineer. And several and months he ago, agree, we, and he agreed with me. Yes, and so when you brought that up to us before, where I wrote a letter to the president of MJ, and I specifically asked that Mr. Howe not be involved in any town projects, and he told me that that would not happen. Okay, but we still have Mrs. Howe involved in it. She's the town clerk. All I do. I know that, but. I, I've asked that it goes in a different direction, and Joel agreed with it. I have that. I did not review the contract. I'm just the one that added the dollars up and got the wrong information. Yeah, just so we understand, Brenda has no authority over MJ's contracts. Mm -hmm. All she did was add the numbers. <clears throat> I don't view that as a contract. Well, Joel She's agreed right. that it was. I don't have anything. Well, I'll take the email. Yeah. Okay. I don't have it. So you got an email from Joel, but you didn't share it with the rest of us? No, the whole board got it. I emailed, I emailed the whole board, and he responded to the whole board. When I sent the email to Joel, I included the whole board. Any further discussion? Is this something we're on a time schedule? Yeah, we have to do this. We, we are, yes. We have to do this soon, or we won't be. Yes. By the first year. We have to the first year to get this done. But it needs to be done. Can I suggest we give Barb the wireless microphone so that she doesn't have to keep swinging microphones that way? Yes. That's yeah. okay. I'm not. I'm going to be quiet on this one for now. We're going to keep on the board. You don't have to, Barb. Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Krolish. Yes. Councilman Zaxel. Yes. Supervisor Zalatnik. Yes. Can I get that from my front for though? Because it, it's getting ridiculous that people at home can't hear anything, sir. Yes? Yeah, I'll use it. Do you want to use the wireless? I don't care. Yeah, I'll use the wireless. Next up is a letter of resignation uh, from the court. Dear Judge Brown and Judge Cromie, writing this letter of notice is not easy or something I want to be doing. Unfortunately, my circumstances have changed, getting me to reevaluate my situation here at the court, and that does not offer full time employment at this time or anytime soon. The job I interviewed for recently gave notice of the neighboring town court did offer me a full time position beginning August 23rd. My last day with the Milton Town Court will be August, Thursday, August 19th, 2021. I cannot thank you all enough for my experiences, the opportunities, training and mostly the friendships that I have gained working here. I cannot recall a single day that I did not enjoy coming into work. The past three years have tried all of us and in many ways brought us closer. I'm always close by and will be there for any of you should you need anything at all, so please don't forget me. Take care, Tina Woodard. Benny, would you take off your mask and repeat the whole thing? Come on, man, we can't hear you. We've been telling you that. Dear Judge Brown and Judge Cromie, writing this letter of notice is not easy or something that I want to be doing. Unfortunately, my circumstances have changed, needing me to reevaluate my situation here at the court, and that it does not offer full-time employment at this time or any time soon. The job I interviewed for and recently gave notice of in the neighboring town court did offer me a full-time position, beginning August 23rd. My last day with the Milton Town Court will be Thursday, August 19th, 2021. I cannot thank you all enough for my experiences, the opportunities, training, and mostly the friendships that I have gained working here. I cannot recall a single day that I did not enjoy coming into work. The past three years have tried all of us and in many ways brought us closer. I'm always close by and will be there for any of you if you need anything at all. So please don't forget me. Take care, Tina Woodard. We need a motion to accept the resignation of Tina Woodard from the Tina Town Court. I'll make that motion. A second. Any discussion? Brenda, can you pull the board, please? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Frolish. I abstain. Can you hear me? We can get close. Council I abstain, but I won't give the long explanation I gave the last time. <laughs> 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 Brenda, be counsel. 
Next up will be a motion to advertise for two new part-time clerks for the Justice Department. I believe the judges have given you uh, typical duties of the Justice Court. I will work with Ryan and Brenda to get those posted to our uh, sites. Motion to advertise. I'll make that motion. Fast. I'll second. Any discussion? I am going to vote against this motion. I think this is a perfect example of what's happening in our town. We pay these part-time people $15 an hour. We train them. We go and send them to school. And they're off to a better job in another town. I think this should be a full-time position and brought up to the same rate that we have in our hamlet. Well, is that what the judges want? Would they, oh, at least, you know, are you talking one full-time or are you talking I'm two talking one full-time. Full -time. I don't have a problem with that, but is that is that going to be what the judges want? Is that going to fill their needs? I don't think so, but I, I, haven't talked. I haven't talked to the judges. Oh, I haven't talked to them about the position. Any further discussion? We're going to take one. There's a motion on the table. Okay, Mr. Brendan, call the board, please. Council in place, yeah. I'd rather see the poll time from other people. Does that mean no? Correct. Okay. Council in the Um, I'll vote. The problem is, I want to see that um, they need help. And they, they're going to fall behind with just one clerk there. Um, Jim, can we do any kind of uh, <coughs> written motion to hire a full time of the judge? That's what the judges would like. Right now, you have a motion to hire a full time of the judge. So go on that one. <coughs> vote against it if that's what you want to do. And then I suggest you circle on with the judges immediately to see if a full time, one full time person was. My, my concern is do we have to wait two weeks before we should <coughs> You can schedule a special meeting. Oh, gee. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, I, I'll go no on this and, until we have an opportunity to speak to the judges. I'm voting no. Councilman Jackson. Was this the request of the, the court? It was. I'll vote yes. Supervisor Slavic. Just, uh, I'm going to vote yes. Motion passed? No. Motion failed. Okay. I'll call the judges in the morning and let them know they don't have a clerk for next week. Next up, a little update on the emergency core. I asked two real estate agents to give me some information on prices or what they were looking for for vacant land. We have the one letter from uh, Ray Ott. He had a real estate agent look at it. I asked another woman in town who's a real estate agent to look at properties similar to two-acre land, two-acre lots. There wasn't really a whole lot that was in the commercial district that was two acres. Um, the numbers that she came up with are in the twenty-five to thirty thousand dollar an acre range. You have those three pieces of paper, I believe, in front of you, um, and and the rate that uh, Ed came up with for Ray was in the same same area. So uh, we can talk about what we'd like to set a rate for the ambulance court. Doesn't have to be written in stone, but we can get the ball rolling anyway to see what we'd like to do with that. I think well, we have a good idea of what we're looking at. To respectfully disagree with you, Mr. Supervisor, a real estate agent is not the proper person to appraise the property. You hire an appraisal company. The appraisal company will give you a detailed report on what that property is for. We had one of those, and they, their report was $240,000. I have a price from an appraisal company in Saratoga for $500, and they'll do the report. And when we talked about it the last time, two meetings ago, you were going to call appraisal companies the next day. I did call two companies and they never got back to me, John. Tell us that. I called them several times over the last week and they have not returned my call.
Go ahead, call your, get a hold of your appraisal company and have them do their work. Well, first we have to pass a motion to spend the $500. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. $500 is under our, uh, is under the uh, procurement budget. We don't have to have a motion for that. I'll take it out of my budget. So you want this company fired? Give me the number tomorrow and I'll call them. Thank you. Next up, I sent you all an email on August 4th asking for your input on the Heritage Springs hearing. The only member I heard back from was Councilman Isaacson. These were the recommendations that I made. I'm not hearing back from any of you. I have no idea where this is headed. My, uh, my thoughts were public comment of four minutes. Ryan said, let's up that to five. I said, no questions from the floor. All questions to be submitted by 825 for board review. The majority of the board will deem, deem, need to deem the questions relevant in order to be read at the review. Questions will not be given to Heritage Springs in advance unless calculations are needed. And the public will have 10 days to submit follow-up questions. I also stated we do not need a stenographer as we have a town clerk, a Zoom recording, and a member of the public that records the event. Since none of you got back to me, I'm not sure if that communication is on me or the board members, but you did have this email a week ago, and the only one I heard from was Councilman Isaacson. So I'll open up the floor for any discussion from board members. Correct. I didn't get back to you because you said we were going to discuss it at open meeting. Right. But I do have a few things. Uh, first, I think we should engage our audio rental service to come in and light this place and get it so everybody can hear these things. Thank you. Uh, but also hear the Zoom and have that up on the screen where people can see it. I also think we should have an independent moderator for this rate review. My reason being, Betty, and it's no reflection on you, but once this decision is made, one of the sides is not going to be happy. I don't want to point back and say, well, it was slanted because Benny was in charge. So I think we should find an independent moderator for this. Um, I think it should be either videographed or have a stenographer done. Talking with the person who does the, our Zoom meetings now, and if you watch the Zoom meetings, you will understand that the audio on those Zoom recordings sometimes is terrible. I think this that needs to be an official record because I'm sure it's probably going to end up in litigation one way or the other. I agree with Ryan as far as five minutes, and I really, it depends on how many people are here to speak, but I want everybody to be comfortable and have their say. I do not want this to be a back and forth between the crowd and the sewer company. We're here to gather the information to make it educated decision and I think people can have their say they can pose questions if we want to pose those on to the sewer company we can be the ones to do that but to get in the back and forth you said she said this happened that happened I don't want to see that my other thing as far as sworn testimony and I leave this up to Jim if we have this either a stenographer do it or a videographer come in and do it, will it bear more weight is that if this testimony is sworn? Uh, to be honest, yes, and, and that's only in the context of litigation. We have I would be a proponent of a stenographer only because they would prepare a more complete and accurate record of their transcript to be able to use in court. I know we have a bunch of other uh, outlets here that are recording. Um, I haven't used those, but in the context of litigation, 
and I'm not saying there's going to be litigation, but there's certain potential for litigation. In the context of litigation, it's an obvious trend that we do the best that we have. And as far as swearing in, um, even when people are sworn in, they lie. <laughs> so sorry to say that. That's how you end up with perjury. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, if we have a stenographer, she should sure be able to swear the people in. I, I guess my other question, Jim, is who do we actually swear in? Do we actually swear in just heritage? Do we actually swear in people that are making statements? Uh, it would just be heritage. Okay. That's, that's what the rate review is, is for, and those are the people who we will be getting information from. I guess that was about it for what I got. Thank you, John. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure it should be all written questions coming in. I think people should be able to ask questions from the floor. I don't want it to turn into a sideshow here. So please, let's do the best we can on this. But I'd like to see some questions from the floor. <coughs> Anyone else? Okay, so I guess what we'll do is we'll uh, take a vote on each of these recommendations and, with, uh, and whatever we come up with is what, we'll, what we will do. So the uh, first one was five minutes of public comment. Just a show of hands or an eye, you know, I mean, aye, all right. Um, questions from the floor? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, okay, that takes care of that then. Um, no questions given to Heritage in advance unless calculations are required. Okay, that's a yes. And 10 days for the public to submit follow-up questions. That's 10 days post, right? Right. Yeah, we're all in favor of that too. Okay. Uh, stenographer, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Thank you very much. What's your meeting? What's the date of the meeting? September. September first. What about the audio? What about the audio? And the audio. Uh, will, 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 will we have time to hire someone to get them in here? Yeah, they rent these things, I guess, all the time. But specialized audio was a company I saw in the record here in Clifton Park. Would you do one to look into that for us, John? I can do that. Okay, that'd be tomorrow. great. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Everybody, where is it located? Where does it take place? Here. Here. Okay. What about swearing them in? We didn't get over that one. Jim said if there's a stenographer, they'll be sworn in. So they'll be sworn in? That's what he said. Thank you. From the county level, the Trails and Open Space Committee, we authorized the chairman to enter into an agreement with the Snowmobile Grant Program for Saratoga County. There is no budget impact. That's uh, all state aid. Uh, buildings and grounds, we authorized an acceptance of uh, $59,000 from the American Rescue Plan for the uh, airport that was to pay for COVID-related expenses during the, uh, during the crisis. Does anybody have anything else? We want to do public comment first, and people have, uh, and then now we'll have our uh, second public comment session. I just have a quick question: Is there going to be a limit for how many people can be here for the meeting? The meeting will be on Zoom, and we'll be limited to whatever our attendance is here—30, 30, 35, whatever it is. Zoom and here. Yes. Okay. Zoom is up to 100 people. Okay. We have room on, on Zoom for 100 residents. Mr. Ross. <laughs> Frank Rossi Jr., 
63 Saratoga Avenue, apartment B. Amen. <laughs> Spa, New York. It's a rare year when the Bogosians, the Rossies, all agree in Kumbaya like this, but you know what? I don't hate it. I think I hate the reasons it's happening, though, generally. And here's a for instance. That's what causes that. Here's a for instance. The Route 50 corridor study update fell off the agenda last time, uh, if you remember. I think in a draft agenda it may have been there. Where is it? I didn't hear anything about it tonight, did you? We paid MJ for traffic studies or whoever is doing it. A good amount of money, I bet you. Probably about 30, 40,000 is my guess for doing the traffic studies, etc. Where are they? And don't get me wrong, I like MJ. But last time we were here, I suggested a good solution to something that we ascertained from what MJ did with their survey on the back wall there that one time, the live survey about mixed use. And we all seem to agree that mixed use is a good idea in the Route 50 corridor to get some mix of residential and commercial. Maybe not the Ellsworth Commons mix, but some mix, indeed. And I suggested there is a good way to do it because there's not a one-size-fits-all type of zoning based on the difference in type of land and land obstacles throughout that corridor. As I mentioned to MJ in the past, think of the wetlands that are in behind the Briarwood florist area, etc. The old price chopper that really wasn't going to be built, in our view, back when, that they tried to say they could put back there. We all knew they couldn't because of the wetlands back there. But there are things that can go there. And mixed use is a good idea, but even a better idea to get to the mixed use would be a PUDD allowance, which currently can't be done because it's not over 20 acres, any parcel there, but we can write it in. And Jim and I have talked uh, briefly about the idea of maybe me submitting some code ideas. Pretty much the code idea is to put one extra allowance into the PUDD code for any piece of property on that strip to be eligible for PUDD. There isn't much else needed in our enabling code. We don't need MJ to tell us that. We don't need to pay MJ $40,000 to tell us that. We're not going to afford a traffic rotary. We're not going to be able to afford or upkeep the medians that some people want to do. But what we can do is look at the things that we can do that people said they wanted and give it to them. A mixed use opportunity that I know exists because we've spoken to people that want to put it apartments and commercial in that zone and have it get done here in the next couple of years. Please act on that. We don't need that study to be delivered at this point and spend any more money on this. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mr. Zanella. Uh, I have a solution on the helicopter idea or situation, I recommend that the board Tony, you have to speak into the oh, okay. I, I recommend that the board suggest using Glens Falls Airport. It's out in the middle of nowhere. There are no houses around it. They use it for the balloon fest. So why can't they go up there? And and I also understand that they are night missions. So that's why they're doing them ending at 10.30. If you recall a couple of years ago that this was brought up when they were ending after midnight. Okay, So I think we had uh, an alternative suggestion to them, whether they take it or not. That's what we proposed. The other thing is I want to thank everybody on the board for listening to me and Mr. Rossi, but the thing of it is, we gotta act on it, okay? We gotta be treated as taxpayers, and when it comes to saving some money, we gotta do it. So, thank you, sir. Anyone else? <clears throat> Sharon?
There was a request last meeting, two weeks ago, that the controller be here to give a report on financial status of the town of Milton. And I would love to hear that myself since half of the year is now gone and there may be uh, a good idea to see where we're at. Uh, who knows where we're at? I don't see any of the county sales tax reports any longer. None of those are apparently important uh, anymore. I think we went up, but I'm not sure. Uh, but I think it would be really important for the taxpayers to know where we're at. And I'd like to know if there's anything going on at Town Hall. Since I didn't hear any report tonight about anything that's happening there, I kind of expected to hear it, uh, whether uh, the courts are happy in there, are they in there, when are you guys going to move back in there, when are the seniors going to come back here. So I just wish that we would have an update every meeting um, for old business. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. McGovern. Thank you, and Rossi's and McGovern, probably won't be singing Kumbaya anytime soon, but I appreciate your comments. So, um, I just want to say uh, thank you to the board for making this first step in, in getting uh, a process put together for a great hearing. Uh, I, I'm going to comment on, on Jim's comment of the stenographer. You're absolutely right. It doesn't prevent them from lying, uh, but that's what the perjury uh, comes from. And uh, the stenographer can also uh, mark uh, exhibits that are brought in so that we can have a complete record. So thank you. I think it's a great first step. I think in the next couple of weeks we can refine it a little bit more and even end up with a better rate hearing. So thank you. Uh, a couple of quick comments. Robert's Rules. Get the book, real short, read it, make a motion, second, call a question, discussion, all those things. It will help the meeting go much better. John, I really appreciate you modifying your recusal. This is much better. Um, the issue, uh, I live on the back side of the airport, and I think what the issue is with the helicopters, and I can just take a moment to try to explain it, Planes come and go. They take off, a little bit of noise. Helicopters hover. They hovered over my home the other day for about five minutes. If he gets under 149 feet, then he's going to have an issue. Um, but I think that's the problem with the helicopters. They hover, they land, they take off, the noise is persistent, it stays there, they don't leave, they don't keep flying someplace else. It's, it, it's constant. So. Whatever you can do to help mitigate that, that would be uh, appreciated. And again, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Oh, uh, controversial. You all said you received that letter. You got a letter? Yes, from Mr. Burton, correct? Yes. yes. I hope you read it. And you open your eyes, what's going on over there? You never knew what, never knew half the stuff that's going on, did you? What's in that letter? Did you? Be honest. Some of it, yes, some of it. Some of it's not good, right? Well, <laughs> yeah. Forgive me. My mind isn't so good to remember. It was a pretty lengthy letter. Yeah. Yeah, but, but yes. Just read the parts. Just read it, because I know you did. You know, maybe you knew a little bit. But it's serious and it's dangerous. And I don't know if we're going to go public with this, if we're going to go public to the news, but it's, it's serious what's going on over there. So I hope you read this letter, take your time, and do your research. Research it yourself. Because the person that wrote that letter did a lot of research on it. It's taken a long time to put that together. So we live over there, a lot of people. So please read it. And I'll get back to you in the next meeting and see what you got to say. Thank you. Thank you. I got one more. One more. One more. One more person is asking to speak here on Sunday. Mr. Landis? Oh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. 
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, from Michael Landis, 272 Meadowlark Drive. Uh, please let me apologize for not being able to be at the meetings in person. I have some family issues to attend to. I'm sure you all know how that goes. Uh, I would just like to quickly bring up the noise measurement issue. Um, if I'm correct, I believe that the board has the 2018 uh, official certified uh, noise measurements concerning Planet uh, that demonstrate that Planet, uh, even back in 2018, was operating way above uh, town limits. And I know you guys are considering uh, hiring an engineering firm to uh, redo those testing at a cost of, last time I, I recall hearing about it, was $4,000 to the taxpayer for the town. Uh, I'm urging uh, you guys to reconsider that and to accept the 2018 uh, measurements and save the town $4,000. Uh, we don't need to be told again what we already know, which is that uh, planet is operating way outside the bounds uh, in a variety of ways. So uh, I hope that that issue doesn't get left behind. I hope you'll take a look at those 2018 numbers, and I hope you'll think about where our tax dollars are best spent. Thank you very much. We got something to say? Yeah, thank you, sir. Go ahead. I want to reply. Well, uh, yeah. I just have a couple of things. I appreciate the 2018 noise study, but it really didn't tell me a lot. It was just the numbers. That we, I really need to have the graphs and the things that went into comprising that noise study. Uh, the other thing is, I think it's very good idea once we set this contract to get this noise study done. I think it is a good comparison between the two. So I think we should go ahead with it. To answer your question, Tony, right. I'm not sure it's the other Tony. Oh, the yeah. other Tony. But you, uh, <laughs> sorry. Tony. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, you can answer my question. Tony L. I really think the helicopters at night are military helicopters. Yeah. But with that said, no, they're not. With that said, I don't see any reason why this town couldn't come through with and say, because it, it happens once a month. And if we had to compromise with the military thing, for the town to come through and say, you can do it three times a year, that may be a, a good compromise to it. Because I know the military can just sum their nose at us. And it's important that they do the training. Uh, so that may, I just thought it was when I watch them over my head. Yeah. Some of them are. Yeah. Some of them are military, but you can tell you can tell the difference in the noise. Right. Oh, what's your military? What's you, you can see them. Yeah. You can see them. Yeah. Yeah. There's a helicopter school there that was never there before. Okay. And that's the problem. Is this helicopter school right. is letting people with no experience get behind the what is it, wheel yeah. and, and hover and touch and go and touch and go and it's dangerous. And the, has there ever been a public comment on that? Yeah, or public? I'm sorry. And the last thing I want to say is over the weekend, a group of veterans and volunteers cleaned up the veterans park yeah, down here. Good. Did a beautiful oh, job. Yeah. And, uh, I really appreciate seeing people just take things upon themselves and getting it done. I wish next time they, they would love a veteran. I wish yeah. next time they would put, you know, Maybe at your meeting, you know, next Thursday or two weeks ago, I would be glad to go down and help. I did it for the city of Saratoga for years. And the playgrounds and the whatever else yeah. they're doing for emergency. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 I think that's more robber, right? I'll leave the first one more. Thank you very much. Next up, we have a motion to go into the second. Wait a minute. I got something to say. I have something to say here about this noise study. You know, for two and a half years, I've been involved in this planet and. Um, the noise issue and the complaints from the neighbors and then Councilman Isaacson jumped in and we worked really hard on it and I thought we had come to a pretty good compromise to get some valuable information. Two years ago, I knew, I mean I never saw the results of the study, but um, two years ago I know he, it was being done. I was there one day when he showed us what he was doing. He um, used the same type of instrument that our highway or that our building department uses, you know, a little gun thing, and point it in the right direction and go. Well, last week I met with the engineer from the company that we agreed to hire, 
and he's doing a much more comprehensive study. He'll be eliminating a lot of the background noises. Um, planes going over, believe it or not, birds in the morning. He was telling me how many decibels that actually has. He'll be filtering that out. And his report will be something we can compare to the New York State DEC noise policies and be accepted. Okay? And that's something the neighbors were pushing for, except the go with the New York State laws. So um, if any of the neighbors or, or any of the people in this have any other issues, I, I really would appreciate them talking to me about it. And we can work it out, but I think we're going to get a really good study out of this program, out of this company. Barb, are we talking about hey, folks, one this thing is not two? Mr. Zanella, I'm sorry. Uh, this I'll is answer not off the mic sometime. I'll yeah. explain what's going on. I know you haven't been here. So, that's it. Next up is a motion to go into executive session to discuss employment personal issues. I'll make that motion. <coughs> I'll second. Pull the board, please, Brendan. Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Carter. Yes. Councilman Crowley. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalotnik. Yes. Executive session. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Can you pull the board, Brendan? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilman Park. Yes. Councilman Crowley. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalotnik. Yes. All right. Yes, next. We need a uh, <laughs> motion to hire two part-time employees for the court or one full-time employee af after discussions with the judges. So we're going to yes. advertise for it. Advertise. That's it. Did I say advertise? Advertise and, and let the judges make the decision how, what, how they want to hire those positions. Right. Well, make them get their position before you advertise. That's them. right. Talk to them tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I'll, I'll make that motion. All right. I'll second. Thanks, Frank. Any discussion that we've already had? Brenda, pull the board, please. Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Carr. Yes. Councilman Prolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalotnik. Yes. Any further business before this board? I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Second. Third. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Uh, Frank, John, Brian, everybody second. Who's the time? Meetings adjourned. Good night. May your God bless you.